What's up, my friends? Welcome back. Today we are starting a new series with a lot of videos about mailbag. Basically, I think I will call this series mailbag and that's it. And I know that you will like it because a lot of other channels are doing this and it's probably one of the content for cre uh, creators with electronics that people most like. So that's why I'm doing it as well. And also because I have a lot of packages. Because you see, I think each month I receive between 100 and 200 packages. Now, a lot of those packages are just transistors, resistors, very small components, some screws, other tools. But some of those, the, those packages are products. Like for example, this one here, this one here, or other special components that I use for my tutorials. So what I want, these are tutorials that I haven't made yet. So what I want to do is to just get each of the, these packages, open it up, make maybe like one or two minutes of review. I want to show what we have inside. I want to tell you what I will use it for. And in case of uh, just a product, I will tell you what it will do. For example, this one here is just a switch. We'll take it out and explain you for what I want to use it. But this is not for a tutorial, but more like for an example inside of another tutorial. So guys, just for you to understand the amount of packages that I receive for my projects, I'll try to put on the screen. I'll flip the camera to see what I have in front of me all the boxes with all the components for future projects and also from, for, from previous projects. And I have a lot of more boxes here with a lot of other components that I save for ideas that I have like transistors, coils, a lot of magnets, small components, PCBs and so on. So just imagine how much stuff I could show you and in that way you will make an idea of what you could buy for example from Aliexpress, eBay and so on and use those for your projects. So what I want to do with this kind of mailbag is show you what components you could buy and in that way you will have some more ideas for your own projects. Sounds interesting? So let's get started. Okay guys, so I've cleared the table and I have only these two packages and I know these are related one with each other because these are for the same uh, project and also I've opened this one. You will see that some of these some of these boxes that I will show you are already opened, especially for some products, because these are products that I received like one month or two months ago, so obviously I've already opened it. But some of these are not opened and it will be a surprise for me and also for you. So let's just open this one, I'll show what it is and then I'll change the camera angle and show it a little bit closer and tell you what I will use this for. So let's just open the first box, got my cutter here, oh I hope I didn't cut something inside. Small bag, a very nice PCB, a manual, and then we have some plastic knobs. So, what is this for? As you can see, it's just a PCB with a huge relay. As you can see, this can stand, I think, up to 100 amps or so. So, basically, this PCB, I want to use this PCB to create a spot welder. This just cost me $20. I'm making my own PCB based on the same concept, but even better with a lot more sensors. And why I want to use this PCB? Well, because like two months ago, if you remember, I've opened uh, and teared down an old microwave, uh, microwave oven and inside I found a huge transformer. So we can hack this transformer and instead of just outputting like 200 volts, we can connect the input on the, the secondary and then have a lower voltage at the output, but with a lot of more current. So instead of having like 200 uh, windings, we can change to maybe two or three windings with a very thick cable, and that will output very low voltage, like one volt or two volts, which can harm us, but it will output a lot of current, up to 100 amps or even more. So with that, we can just apply that to some electrodes. That's why we received this here. Let me just break this back. As you can see, this is a copper electrode. So what you can use this for is to just place a metal ribbon, metal sheet on top of the batteries, for example, and use this as a spot welder with the transformer. Actually, let me just change the camera angle, get the transformer that I have it right there from the previous tutorial and explain you what I have here and also what I have here. Also what the PCB has in order to control such a huge amount of power. Let me just change the camera angle. Okay guys, so now I've changed the camera angle so we can see the PCB up close. I can make a zoom here and explain you the components that we have here. And as you can see, this is the transformer that I was talking about. And I've took this out from an old microwave oven. So in case that you also have a microwave oven and it doesn't work anymore, instead of throwing it away, just open it up. Make sure that you discharge that huge capacitor because that could hold a huge char uh, charge, especially if you, if you just unplug it. And then just tear it down and make sure that you take this transformer out. 
Basically, this it uh, has an input of two, uh, 230 volts and it will output something like 2000 volts. But we will reverse it, we apply the input at the secondary and at the primary we will have a very very low voltage but a lot of current. Actually, we have to remove this copper coil here inside. Let me just show it on the other camera. We have to remove this copper coil and add another coil with a lot more thickness because it should be able to withstand 100 amps or even more. So, let me explain you what do we have here. Okay, so basically this small PCB has two inputs. One is for 16 volts uh, AC and the other one is for 230 volts from the main input. So basically this will be a very dangerous video because it works with 230 volts AC which could be even little. So make sure that you never connect power while touching, it, touching the board, always use the proper tools and so on. So basically the 16 or 12 volts input is to supply the entire board. It has a small rectifier here. So with that we'll get 16 volts DC. Then we have a voltage regulator to get 5 volts for the microcontroller, which is this one here, which I don't even know what brand is. Let me just make a close-up look here. Usually when you buy this kind of PCBs, they erase the serial number from the component so you couldn't copy the same board. So I can't tell you what component is using. And then using this other small board, as you can see here, it has a small display and we have some push buttons. We can control with the potentiometer. Where is the potentiometer? Ah, these two potentiometers here. We can control the amount of peaks that we want to create, the pulses and also the length of those pulses. Because when you want to solder something using a spot welder with the transformer, you want to apply very small pulses of high current. You don't want to apply a continuous uh, line of current because that could burn and uh, melt the metal too much. So with this we adjust the pulse uh, length and also the pulse, the amount of pulses and then when you press a pedal, which by the way I don't have uh, yet, on these connectors you can connect the pedal. So that pedal will activate the pulses and apply just a very short burst of those pulses. And to control such a uh, huge amount of current and also voltage, we use this track here, which by the way is the BTA100-800B. If you want to uh, search it online, Maybe I'll try when editing this video to place the, piece, the data sheet of this component and show you how much current and voltage it could withstand. So that's it. But if you take a look at the PCB, on the bottom side especially, as you can see, it has a side that is for low voltage, which is this one here, and you can see that it has a copper ground uh, plane, and that, then we have here the high voltage with the symbol for warning, this is high voltage. And as you can see, this is, uh, there is a huge space between the tracks in order to separate the high voltage from the low voltage. And also, I can already see here this component. Let me just show it to you. The white component here. This must be an optocoupler because in that way we separate the signals from the controller with the signals that are going to the IGBT because the optocoupler, instead of using electricity to send commands, it uses uh, light. So instead of this component, we have a diode that is sending light to the other side and like that we keep the high voltage and the low voltage insulated. So basically I'm working on such a PCB myself that will be based obviously on the Arduino because with Arduino we have enough speed to make this thing. So we will control, we will read some potentiometers and with that we will control some pulses applied to an optocoupler and that optocoupler will control the gate of an IGBD and also uh, we will implement some safety features, a fuse input and so on and we'll make a pedal controller. And by the way, with, for the pedal controller, I have this other box here. So let me just open it up and I will show you what we have inside. I have actually already opened this one, but yes, it doesn't have anything to scotch tape to open it. And basically this is just, these are just two huge copper electrodes. Let me just focus with the camera. So as you can see, we have two huge copper electrodes. We'll connect the wires here and from here we'll connect the wires directly to the transformer and this on the output, as you can see it has some uh, holes. Let me just focus here. And on these holes we'll place these uh, copper electrodes. So just like that we'll place the copper electrodes here and like that we can use this to just solder the batteries and this will make for a very good homemade spot welder. We just $20 for the board. I think it's not even $20. It's like $15. I'll put all the links for everything that you see in these videos below in the description. 
and then this for me will be for free because instead of throwing away that microwave I just tear it down and took out the transformer and maybe a few more dollars for a huge uh, copper uh, wire and that's it because we don't need a supply because the supply will be directly from the mains outlet so this is the PCB that I will be using for this project together with the transformer if you think this project is interesting and you want to see more and also uh, a lot sooner just comment below and in that way I will prioritize more pro uh, one project instead of the other one because if you like it very much I will put this on my to-do list the first one and maybe I will finish this project the next month because as you can see as you will see in this video I receive a lot of products and my to-do list for the projects is huge so depending on what components I have I decide which project to finish first so have that in mind so basically this will be for a spot welder um, project I think I hope that you like it and now we can go and unbox uh, a different component or different product okay guys so let's unbox a different product I already know what is inside this box because I know who sent it to me because I have the serial of the the shipment but you don't know what is inside so let me just open it and show you what I'm talking about and this will be a very interesting project actually it's not a project it's more uh, for a theory video because sometimes I like to talk about electromag electromagnetisms, about physics and so on so this will be for a more science video and not project video this is a very cheap hydrogen generator let me just show it here maybe a little bit up close basically this cost me only ten dollars we place water inside with some um, with some salts or I'm not sure how this is called in in English let me just bring it to you okay so this is what I'm talking about this is called here like caustic uh, dye or something like that but actually the ingredients are um, hydroxide sodium hydroxide so this is 98% of sodium hydroxide so when you place that inside of water and it will make uh, the water more conductive and then you apply a lot of voltage here I mean not a lot maybe like 20 volts or 10 volts and that will create the electrolysis um, process which basically will split the uh, the molecules of water into hydrogen and oxygen and you will get the oxygen I think it's on the negative side here and the hydrogen on the positive side and then in the middle depending on the pressure that you are building here inside of these small containers in the middle you will just see the levels of each one so why I want uh, to, for what I want to use this that's related with a different product which I don't have here but I will bring it in uh, just a moment and I'll explain to you why I want to use this why I want to use hydrogen and oxygen for what purpose okay so this product is related with this other one which I also know what is inside because I have the shipment uh, through the tracking number so let me just open it actually I received a few of these cells I made a post on Instagram a few weeks ago and a lot of you guys already know uh, what this was about so this is this is called a hydrogen cell so basically this device here is using a special membrane and you merge hydrogen on one side oxygen and on the other side it will output water but at the same time it will uh, output energy so basically this is turning electrical energy into hydrogen and oxygen and this is just the opposite it will turn hydrogen and oxygen into electrical energy basically this is just like a battery that is using hydrogen it is called a hydrogen cell or a fuel cell and basically some of the hydrogen cars are using this kind of cells obviously this is just like a prototype or a toy it's not that powerful but we're using a lot more high tech you can get a car to work with this this kind of cells just by adding hydrogen we mix it with oxygen and we get uh, well elect electricity so what I want to do is to make a full experiment with some voltmeters and ammeters and I will create oxygen and hydrogen here I will pass that with some tubes to the to the cell and then connect a motor at the output and measure the output power uh, both voltage and current and makes uh, a few more experiments and also explaining the theory behind this how this works I hope this will be interesting I don't even know if I should place the camera on top of this because I will try to show you some close-up of this but this is the cell as you can see it has a small membrane here in the in the middle and then we have two outputs the negative and the positive side so basically these are just opposite 
The process of this is called electrolysis. And the process of this, I'm not sure how it's called. I will search it when I will edit the video and maybe place it on top of the video when I will edit it. But basically it will create water once again, but the process of merging oxygen and uh, hydrogen will also generate electricity. And we can take that, store it into batteries and then use it with an electrical motor. So we, we input hydrogen here, oxygen here, and on the other two holes we output the water and on these two pads, we output the electricity, the power. I think this will create something like one or two volts maximum. And this is the other, the electrolysis container. We place water in the middle. These are the two electrodes. We apply power here and here. And on this one, I will create oxygen. And on this one, I'll create hydrogen, as you can see here. And then obviously, I will output that from with using some plastic tubes, some rubber tubes, and connect it to this fuel cell and generate power. And I hope that with this, I'll be able to explain you how this tool works using animations and so on. Okay, so the next thing that we'll see is not actually neither a component or a product. It's actually a PCB from our dear sponsor, PCBWay. Actually, inside of this box, that's why this is huge, because I have the PCBs that I've used for my full sign inverter. By the way, the video is below or on some card here up, uh, I think it's on this corner. Yes, it's on this corner. So if you want to check it out, check this PCB, it's awesome. I'm very, very uh, satisfied with the results that I have with this PCB and it works just as I want it to. 500 watts, full sign inverter, works great. But we, I've also received this PCB here and this is the PCB that I want to show you and also explain you for what project I want to use this. This is quite awesome. So guys, this is the PCB that I received for a future project from PCB Way. And as you can see, you receive it in a vacuum seal, so it will stay protective, protected. Also, it has some bubble wrap, so it won't get damaged. And it will be inside of this uh, box that will be full with this foam, so it will stay well protected in place. Okay, so about the PCB, I just cut this with my cutter, so I can take one out. That's the PCB. And this will be a PCB for a Tesla coil. But instead of making a coil, on a plastic tube, I will make it directly on the PCB. So I'll just make a zoom in and you will see that these are just very fine tracks. And I've especially designed this and talked with the PCB in, uh, PCB way engineers to make this 0.15 millimeter width and also gold plated. So it will be, uh, it will have a lot lower resistance. And I think I have here like 200 and something loops. Okay, so I've made a zoom in. Actually, I'll try to place on your screen some close up with the macro lenses but as you can see we have some very fine tracks so the power will input on these pads here and we'll have a different PCB below which is still in production and that will PCB will just receive music from a Bluetooth music receiver it will create a very high frequency uh, signal applied to a coil and a capacitor that will make the resonance with this coil here and that will create some huge voltage sparks plasma sparks and um, at the same time it will play some music so we'll have some sort of rod here in the middle this will be the coil and this will be the rod and on the tip of that rod we'll have some sparks i've seen such a project on the internet and i thought hey i should make one myself as well and share it with you guys this is the pcb this is the primary coil just one loop and the secondary has i think are 200 loops i'm not sure i will have to check the design but something like 200 loops. And the problem that I have with this PCB is that when you are making these tracks so small, you can't have a solder mask in between, which is not a problem for me, but I had to talk it with the engineer from PCB Way and get it exactly as I wanted. Okay guys, so stay tuned for such an awesome project. I'll share with you the Gerbers for the PCBs for both the top plate and the bottom plate, which is not ready yet. But that will have some 555 timers to create the oscillating signal. We apply that to the coil and the capacitor. That will create a resonance signal with high voltage and that high voltage will create plasma arcs and at the rhythm of the music. It will be quite awesome. And now that I have you here talking about PCBs, I would just want to talk a little bit, just a few words about the sponsor of this video, which is PCBWay as always. So just hear me out. Why do I like PCBWay? Well, first of all, because the quality of the PCBs is great. As you can see, you can make all sorts of PCBs, all sorts of sizes. This one is huge, for example, and the price is very low. I mean, I remember just a few years back, maybe like seven, eight years back, when I just started designing PCBs, it was like 
maybe a hundred dollars to just make one PCB and it was very difficult to get it but now with this low cost from PCB way you can get five PCBs or ten PCBs for just five dollars which is amazing and then you have a lot more options you can select for example the gold plated one you can select the minimum track distance up to 0.13 millimeters which is amazing imagine just a track 0.13 millimeters that's a very high resolution and the other part that I like is that each time that you upload the Gerber to PCBWay, which by the way is very easy, in just two minutes you can complete your order. Each time that you upload that Gerbers, it will stay there in, and in just a couple of minutes you will get a response from the engineers help you with the order. Because for example, this PCB, I'll try to place on the screen the mail that I've got from, from one of my engineers. They, they told me that it has a small error and one of the tracks was very close to the other one so if they will produce that it will have an error so what I like is that you have a very great communication with the engineers and they will give you tips on how to improve your design so when you pass the Gerber to factory it will, get, it will output the output will be exactly how you want it so that's another tip that I like with PCB Way. and obviously I like the fact that in just a couple of minutes I can upload the Gerber files select a few settings make the payment and in just maybe five or six days with uh, depending on the shipping and depending where you live I receive my PCB so anytime that I make a small prototype I can just upload the Gerbers to PCB way and pay like five dollars plus shipping and in just a few days I can have the prototypes and test them out and for me as an engineer and a creator and a maker it, that's very easy that's very easy because like that I can make another version and another version till I get the great results and the fact that I received the boards in just a, a few days uh, will make the project be possible a lot faster. So that's why I like PCBWay. And if you want to use their services, the link will be below. Just go there, quote now, upload the Gerber files, and sometimes they e even get some coupons for you. And by the way, you can enter the contests because sometimes they also make contests. So you can just create a PCB, share the photos as a project on their website. You go to shared projects, and then you enter with that project a content and you can win coupons, you can win money, PCBs, services and so on. So check the link below. Okay guys, so for the next product you can already see what's inside. This is just a very cheap soldering iron, but this is actually a desoldering iron. Basically it will heat up its tip and then create a vacuum and can extract the solder. And I wanted this for a long time, I had the manual one which you should use with a, a soldering iron and then just a pump which is not that great and I hope this will, will be a lot better. So let's just open it up, show you the product and that's it. This will be very quick. Pretty basic. You get the parts of the soldering, the soldering iron and how to use it. Then we get a new tip which is made out of metal. Let me just take it out for you in case that the other one broke. And we also get a cleaning tool because this could fill with solder and that's very difficult to, to clean. So basically, okay, let's just go on the other camera. As you can see, it's just like a normal soldering iron. We have the hot tip here, but the tip instead of having a metal one, it's just a hole. And then we have this pump, which I can see that I can remove it. So we just press it, it will click into place. And when you click this button here, Whoa, it has too much power. <laughs> How to fix it back like that. Let me just place it here because without this support, I can see that it will fly away. So basically, you heat it up, you touch the pad, you melt the solder, you make sure that you press that button so it will stay in that place. And when you press it, it will release sucking up all the, the melted solder and like that you clean all your small pads for your PCBs and I wanted this for a long time and I'm not sure why I've waited so much it's from the same brand for, as my soldering iron station is from Gihua it's not a very uh, known brand but it's, it's quite good I mean I had a soldering station for like five years now and it never failed me so that's why I bought this from the same uh, company. It's the 929D V. It works with 220 volts up to 240 volts, obviously 50 hertz or 60 watts, uh, 60 hertz. It has 30 watts, which is more than enough to melt a lot of huge pads. And that's it. That's another product that you should also have in mind. It only costs like 15 or 20 dollars. So if you need such a component, I'll place you the link below.
not component, such a tool. I'll place the links below. Okay, so here I have the next product. And this, as you can see, I've already opened the cardboard box, but then we have some sort of metal or aluminum box. And this is the product that I want to show you. I'll use this for a project to measure something, but also I'm already designing a PCB for such a project because I want to make a homemade one. This is a very interesting one. Actually, I've made a project that could be compared with this one. If you remember the project with the electrical, the electronic load, basically you have a MOSFET, you can control the gate of that MOSFET in order to control its resistance. So you can digitally control the load. So if you want to test, for example, a motor, you could apply um, a lot of values for the load and test it for one watt, two watts, three watts, four watts, and so on. So basically this is, as you can see here, is called a USB DC, let me just read it in, in English, a USB DC safety protection tester, this one here. And basically on the top part, we have the controller with an LCD display and a lot of type of inputs. We have USB 3, we have a DC 5.5 millimeter input DC, uh, we have a type C input, we have another jack, we have a USB micro input. So basically we have all sorts of inputs and then those are connected to the bottom PCB here. And here, as you can see, we have in the middle, let me show it on the other camera. We have a fan, a heat dissipator and a huge uh, MOSFET. And that will be our load. So basically the digital part will control the load and like that you can control how much current will pass or how much voltage it will pass and or how much power because this, will, this will, could work with constant load, constant resistance, constant voltage or constant current. The digital part and the input on the top side, I guess that the power is connected using these uh, brass rods. I'm not sure if brass is a very good conductor, but I don't see any wire between the bottom PCB and the top PCB. So I guess that this is using for power and signals. We have four of these. So you can see we have a bunch of inputs, normal USB, USB, USB micro, USB type C, which is male, uh, female, USB type C male. We have another USB input female, a DC jack, and another DC jack for mail. Okay, so here I have a USB cable from my laptop. I hope that it will have enough power to just turn it on without wasting any power. And there's the display. You can see the voltage, the current and the power. And I think if I activate it from this button, it will turn off. Let me just see that. We have a switch here, now it's on. And now we can change the current output with this potentiometer here, just by rotating it. Anyway, the power from my laptop is not enough because it only out outputs one amp, so it will turn off. But as you can see, it also has a Bluetooth connection, so you can connect this to your smartphone and see the power in real time. You can create graphs and so on. You have a lot more information here on the manual. Let's just find the chapter for smartphone app, if it has, because I'm not sure that it has one. As you can see, you can connect it to your smartphone to another resistive load, an externally resistive load, or to your notebook, which is just like a laptop. So basically, I will use this to measure the power or for a power supply that I'm creating based on the STM32, and I will use this to apply different loads, and like that I can really test my power supply. You can also use this with motors, with inverters, and so on. And I'm also planning on making such a resistive load, because the digital part is very easy, just a, a screen and an input, and the difficult part will be to control the load here. And just making two PCBs like this one with a heat dissipator should be very easy. We order the PCB at PCB way and mount it up. So basically it will be a very compact uh, electronic uh, load. Actually I want to use this old cooler from a PC to create my electronic load, the same as this one, but for a lot more power. Using a MOSFET and a digital control with the Arduino. So in that way I will uh, spare this part and use it for another purpose instead of buying a new one. Okay, the next product I want to show you is this one. This comes into inside of a transparent case so you can already see what it, what it is. Let me just open it and explain you a little bit about this board. This is a development board based on the ESP32. As you can see, we have the microcontroller here, but then we also have a lot of components already soldered to the PCB. So we make this kind of the boards, development boards, to just easy your code. 
because in that way you don't have to worry about the hardware, only about the software. So you just plug the USB connector and then you can try different codes because you have a TFT display with a resistive uh, plate here, so you can just use it as, as a touchscreen. You also have an RGB LED to control here. We have an LD, LDR resistor so you can detect light. On the back we have an SD card input. We also have an amplifier and a small uh, speaker output. We also have the programmer. What more do we have? We have the button for start and boot, of course, for the ESP32. We have the USB input. I think this one here is a real-time clock, so you can also know the time. So basically, you can just imagine a project and instead of prototyping on a breadboard with connections, with the Arduino and other external sensors, you have everything that you need on this board. And you actually, I've made such a board for the Arduino. We had the NRF24 radio module, we had an OLED display. So basically, what you want a board that already has all the hardware and you only want to worry about the software because you want to test something out instead of making the connections, just plug this board, test the screen, test your graphics, test the sensors, the LEDs, the programming the part, you can just upload something to your SD card, read it and display it pictures, sounds with the speaker and so on. All inside of just a small module that costs like $20. Also again, the link will be below. So. Tell me if you are interested into this PCB to make a full video about this one and test it with different codes and show, show you what it could do. And if, if you want such a video, just comment below and I'll make one. I mean, for me it will be very basic, but maybe a lot of you don't know how to use such a development board and you want to know what examples you could make with it, to learn with it. So I'll make a full video, show you a few examples, maybe like how to use the screen, the touchscreen, the LED, the sensor and what ideas you could have using this board. So comment below if you are interested into such a video. Okay, so this is the developing board. We have the screen and the touch screen, which is based on a resistive sheet. As you can see, we have these four inputs. And basically by reading the resistance on the, of these four inputs, let me just make a close up. I'm not sure if this can focus. The resistance of this input, we can know on which position we are touching with our finger. So it has the touch screen, the this is the RGB LED, this is the LDR sensor, SD card uh, input, the ESP32 and the buttons to control it, an amplifier and a speaker output, this is the programmer, the real-time clock and some other ports. So let me just supply it with a USB connection for 5 volts. We have a small example here. And then let me just increase the exposure here so you can see it there you go so as you can see it has an example something like a like a Facebook page you also have a keyboard if we go to analytics you can see a graph I'm not sure if you can see but this is this has a lot of colors but because of the camera of the exposure there you go, this is blue, but actually you can see it's gray, but with this angle is blue. That's the quality that you get with the TFT display. Anyway, we have some graphs, a gauge, and if we go to shop, we have some sort of website for a shop. So you could understand what you could do with this. Maybe you could connect this, the ESP32 to Wi-Fi, to your database and just display your shop products here. I mean, using this board, the ideas are limitless. We just focus. So basically that's it. You can also see the frames per second and the CPU speed here. Okay guys, so I have only two more packages for you and then we are done with this video. And please, if you like this kind of video, comment below. I know this is just the first one from this series and I'm not very used to make a video without a script. I'm not very used on how to make a small and short review about each product. Each product. Also, the camera position is a nightmare for me, so I will improve it. So if you like this kind of content, I'll promise that I'll improve this kind of content and show you even more uh, special products. And I even have the idea to make a video of mailbag, mailbag only for small modules that are connected to the Arduino or any other kind of microcontroller. So please, let me know in the comments if you like this kind of videos. So let's just open the next two boxes. And the first one is this one here. And this is a battery tester. 
And the reason that I bought this PCB here is that I'm working on such a project myself and I want to compare it. And the first thing that I've noticed is that in the picture, when I bought it, this is from AliExpress. I think it cost me like $15. As always, the link will be below. I noticed that, it's, it, I noticed that it has two sockets for battery. And I've tested it out. And first of all, I've noted that this one is not for charging the battery, but is for supply for the entire PCB, which is strange for me because this board should just charge this battery and discharge it and measure the current value and the voltage over time. And with that, you can know how many milliamps you are stored in that battery. You have stored in that battery. So basically it's a battery tester for those batteries of 18650. Actually, let me just get a few batteries and test it out and explain what this board is about. Okay, so here I have two batteries. These are the NCR 18650B. And they are supposed to be of, I think, 200, 2800 milliamps hour. I'm not sure because I can't see it right now. Anyway, basically, you add this here as a supply, which is the negative. This is the negative. And when you turn it on, you get the display. Let me show it on this uh, screen here. You get the display and you can see the voltage, the current and the power. And then you add the other battery here on the other side, like that. You select the mode using the buttons and you can charge it and discharge it or the auto which will make the entire cycle, charge it and then discharge it. So what I don't understand is why they've used uh, another battery for the supply of the board because I guess that the only mode that you could use with that battery is the discharge mode because you don't need power to discharge another battery. All you have to do is to activate the MOSFET transistor that it will be dumping the entire load through these huge resistors. As you can see, we have some huge resistors here. So you activate the MOSFET and the power from the discharging battery will pass through these resistors going to waste. And all you have to do, to do is to measure the voltage and the current and with that you get the power and you count the time and you will know how much uh, charge was stored into that battery. Till it reaches 2.7 volts, I think, which is the nominal voltage of such batteries. But if you want to charge the battery, you can charge the battery using the other battery because obviously, due to power losses and so, the charge that is stored on this battery won't be enough to fully charge the other battery on the other side. So obviously for that, we have these inputs here. Let me just show you on this camera. As you can see, we have these inputs for, uh, for USB type C connector. So in that way, you can connect an external power supply with an adapter for 5 volts and then charge and discharge the battery and complete the full cycle. So I think it's a, bit, a, bit, a little bit a bad idea to have another battery because if you want to charge and discharge the battery, you would already use the USB Type-C connector. So since you already have that connector, why would you use another battery to supply the board only for discharging the batteries? And maybe that is thought because if you are on the field and you have a few batteries, you want to test them out very quick, you just place it here and click discharge and it will discharge. Actually, this is not quick as, uh, at all because to discharge a battery, you have to wait for the entire process and the entire charge to go away. And usually that is like half an hour. So this is not a quick process. So the basic idea is that I will make the same project, but improve it a little bit. It will have a better design, a better input for the power and maybe slots for one, two or three batteries. And to charge the battery, I will use the same IC that I'm using for those very small uh, modules, which is the TP4650 something, or TP4060, TP4056, I think is the, the IC. And with that, with that, you make sure that it will reach the nominal voltage of 4.2 volts, and it will stop the charging process. And then when it reach the minimum voltage the, of 2.7 volts, it will stop the charging process. You can also add a small chip to control the current input. And like that, you keep the battery safe, but you can also measure the current input and output with some small modules like the ACS 712. Control that with the Arduino, display the values on the screen, count the time, and then you can store all those values, the time and the power inside of the memory of the EEPROM memory and just output that on the screen or maybe even in a TXT file. And like that, you will have the power and the storage charge capacity of that battery. And it should be a very easy project for me to make. The PCB is already in design, it's not final yet. I still have to make a few tests with the charging process because if you want to charge only one battery, it's easy. But if you charge, want to charge more than one battery, they will share the ground potential and that could be a little bit difficult because it will be like charging, like having a balanced charger of 3S. But instead of 3S, it's just 1S in parallel. 
But anyway, that's why I bought this PCB to compare with my project and to learn from this PCB. For example, it's using a huge load to dump all the power and this load, as you can see here on the PCB, is not connected to the rest of the PCB. It has a small gap, so this will dissipate heat and the, the temperature won't reach the other part of the, of the controller where we have all the ICs. So that's a great idea, which, I, which should I also implement with my PCB. So if you want to dissipate power a lot more efficient and not connect it to the rest of the PCB, just separate the board, as you can see, with some small gaps. Just focus. As you can see, we have these small gaps and that will keep the high temperature here and the low temperature here. This is the PCB. It's very simple. It has a TFT display, an on-off switch, input and output uh, connectors, some push buttons to select the mode, and the rest of the ICs to generate, to control the power output through the load. Okay, so the final product I want to show you is this one. I bought three of these, and this is an Alexa-based switch. This is controlled with Wi-Fi. And the reason that I bought this is because if you remember, three weeks ago, no, one month ago, I've made a project for controlling my lights using radio signals because my workshop is up here and the rest of my home is down there. So each time that I go through those stairs, which are awful and make an awful sound, I'll try to place a video on the screen right now, I have to go up again in order to turn off the lights. So for that, I made a radio switch so I can turn off the lights from here and also from down there. So with the same switch, I can control the lights. But I thought it would be a lot easier to control those with Alexa because I have an Alexa here and all I, can, I have to say is just Alexa, turn off the lights and that's it. So I bought this one and I've also seen that you can make the same project with an ESP32. So what I'm thinking about is making a project and show to you guys how to use the ESP32, which costs you only $4, connect it to a relay, which is one more dollar, and with that you have a perfect IoT control for your lights, for your home appliances, and so on. So let me just open this and show you the PCB and show you what we have inside. So basically the idea is to substitute the PCB that I've made with uh, radio control with these controls here, which are based on Wi-Fi, which is a lot better and a lot easier to control only with my voice. So, as you can see, we have a huge capacitor here and then we have the board. And the reason we have this huge capacitor because it will be because this will be connected in series. So you know that a, a light has the neutral always connected and then the power line is connected to a switch and from the switch to the, uh, to the light bulb. So this will be placed on that line in series. So you have neutral always connected to, to the light bulb and then you have uh, just a line that passes through the switch and then it goes to the light bulb. So in order to power this without any external supply, you will add a huge capacitor between the inputs of the load, which will be the light bulb here. So this will store just enough power to fit this one with 200 and something volts. You have a voltage regulator inside and then it will create five volts for the ESP32 or some radio control that it has inside. So let me just open it and show you what we have inside of this Wi-Fi controller. Okay, so all you have to do is to just click this with a tool and then you open it. And as you can see, we have the part for the buttons on one side. This is just a plastic case that will push the buttons. And then we have the PCB here. And obviously this is using a CB3S radio controller. I think this is just a Wi-Fi module. I'm not sure which uh, microcontroller is that one. I'll place a close-up look on your screen right now. And if you don't this microcontroller, it looks like an ESP8266, but it's not an ESP. So I'm not sure what it's using. So as you can see, we have the PCB with the controller and the Wi-Fi connection, but we don't have the relay because the relay is back here. And in order to access this, we have to desolder the pins because these are connected with solder. So I've already opened one there and I will bring it here and show you what we have inside because in order to get inside, we have to desolder these pins. Okay guys, so here I have the open module, which is still soldered together so we can get inside. But here, as you can see, I've had these pins. So I've desoldered these pins from the main uh, board PCB. So that's why, uh, that's how we have an insulation between the high voltage part, which is this one, and the low voltage part is here. And inside of the case, it will be something like this. So basically this receives the Wi-Fi signal and the signal from the push buttons, and then it will send the signals to the relay. And here, as you can see, we have two solid state relays and two outputs because this can control two light bulbs. And you can see that it has a third one, but it's not soldered in place. Actually, if you take a look on the control PCB, you can see three buttons. 
one light switch, two light switch switches, and the third one. So I think that you buy, if you buy the third button PCB, it's just the same PCB but with an extra button and with an extra PC, uh, an extra relay here. Okay, so this here is my Nubix board, and if you compare it, it's pretty much the same thing because this has the Wi-Fi receiver, the push buttons, and then we have a relay control. And this here it has the ESP32, which is the Wi-Fi receiver. This is a voltage regulator with insulation with a transformer for 12 volts. And then we have the solid state relay, which is this one that will control the power output. So what I want to do instead of controlling this with my website with IoT is to install an Alexa library inside with Arduino and control with this, this with Alexa. And this should be quite interesting. But let's just take a look on the PCB here. Okay, so we have the input here, which will be 230 volts. I can see this uh, transformer here, and I guess this is used to transform it to 12 volts for, for DC power, and then a small voltage regulator should be here to get 5 volts. This is the same as I have here. The input is here, the transformer, 12 volts, and then I have these voltage regulators for 5 volts and 3.3 volts. So I guess this is the same design. And then it will receive the data here to control the relay. We have a small transistor that is connected to the relay switch and that's how we control the output. Pretty basic. And as you can see, on the back we have tick tracks for the power and also some clearance like 2 or 3 millimeters between the signal lines and the power. Okay guys, so I think that this should be another interesting project because based on this design I will change my Nubix board to be able to receive uh, signals from Alexa and then control the light with uh, an SSR, with a solid state re relay. And also I'll change this PCB to be a lot more safe, to have a fuse input and also the tracks will be a lot thicker, separated, to have a, a lot of clearance between the low voltage and high voltage and so on. So stay tuned for that because I will change this new Bix board and make the lights of my workshop be controlled with Alexa. Which I guess is very interesting because this board should cost you just a few dollars. The ESP32 is just four dollars or three dollars, and then all you have to to buy is just the connectors and a solid state relay, which is like one dollar on eBay or AliExpress. And the code is easy to use with a library. I found it on the internet, on GitHub. I will share that with you. Just upload the code, change a little bit the settings that you want to receive, and then control the lights using Alexa. It will be quite easy to make. So I think that will be also interesting, so stay tuned for that. Oh, and by the way, just a quick behind the camera for you guys. Remember that I told you that I received a lot of modules? Well, each of these boxes here has components for a specific project. And maybe just 20% of these boxes are with used projects, with already made projects, and the rest are for the future projects. And on this side, I have a lot of more boxes. Let me just make you a close up. As you can see, this is a mess. This is not sorted out yet. For example, this is for the Tesla coil. These are just some resistors, a pack of resistors. These are for a future project for a current meter. And what more do we have? This is some fur fluid. These are a bunch of transistors and regulators and so on. These are the board for the, this is the board for the, um, for the inverter. What more do we have? We have servo motors, magnets, fans, silica bags. We have a cooling fan here, another bag for a future project. So these are not sorted yet, but once I will sort them out, I'll place them here. And that's why I wanted to make a mailbag video, because as you can see, I have a lot of modules, components and products to show you and give you an idea about what you could find online to buy for your projects. That's why I wanted to make this series and I hope that you like it. Keep up you guys. Hey guys, so as you all know, making these kind of videos is not that easy for me. It requires a lot of time. A lot of machinery and also oscilloscopes, power supplies and so on, and also a lot of modules. And thanks to your support on Patreon, is it a lot easier for me to buy those modules. So thank you very much to all my patrons and also to you guys for commenting below, for giving likes to my videos and also sharing my videos to help spread out this information. So thank you very much.